Good morning. We're so glad that you're with us in, in worship today. We do have uh, one announcement that I want to make uh, to you and a, a prayer concern. Uh, Ellen isn't able to be with us today. Uh, she is, is not feeling well. She's had some ongoing digestive issues, and uh, so it was best for her to, to rest and recuperate today. And we're so thankful that Scott is going to uh, lead us in music today with our choir. And uh, Scott, we're so glad that you're here. My friends, uh, you've got up. You've got out, you've got dressed, and you're here, and you're ready to worship, and we're so glad. We hope that you feel welcome and that this place feels like your church home. Again, we're so glad that you're with us this morning. Let's now start with our, our praise hymn, um, we, we Fall Down. Let's sing together and get started with We Fall Down. We'll sing it three times together. One more time, Scott. Fall down, we lay our crown at the feet. Amen. Again, we're welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Our call to worship is selected from Psalm 126. Would you join me in our short litany today? When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Those who go out weeping, bear the seeds for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Amen. Please join me now in our opening prayer. God of mercy, we bow in humble thankfulness that you have called us and claimed us as your own. 
We gather in person and online to receive your truth and to be equipped to proclaim your generous love to the world. Place our feet on the roadway of faith and help us on our journey to share that Jesus is the hope of all. Restore us anew with your spirit as we come faithfully glory in your mercy in worship. Amen. I don't know about that last sentence, but we don't go with that. I enjoy, I invite you now to, to stand and we'll sing together, ye servants of God, your masters proclaim. You, you, you servants of God, your master proclaim. Let's stand and sing together. Servants of God, your master proclaim and published abroad Christ's wonderful name, the name all victorious of Jesus extol, whose kingdom is glorious, who rules over all. Ascended His truth shall say, ascribing salvation to Jesus our King. Please be seated. If we say that we have no sin, then we're fooling ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God who is just and merciful will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. It's in the promise of Jesus' love that we can make our confessions with confidence. Please join me in our confession this morning. Lord, we confess that we have turned away from you to follow false advice and the solutions of our own making. We have overlooked your gifts in the vanity of our own pride. We have been jealous of others' happiness rather than being satisfied with the life given to us. Almighty God, call us back with your forgiveness so that we might be restored in gratitude and grace and that we might proclaim the wholeness of your love forever. Amen. And now I invite you to take a moment for a, a personal confession, uh, reflections, your own meditation, and take a moment to listen for God to speak to your life today. My friends, Christ came into the world to save sinners. He took our bodies, our sins upon his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. 
In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Let us now in response stand and make some noise to pass the peace of Christ. Let's stand and like a rattle. And amen. And now we'll sing our song together. To God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, who's gonna set me free. Has Be seated. Our scripture lessons today come from the book of Job and the, the book of Mark. Some of the illustrations during the presentation of the Job passages are from uh, illustrations from Blake Edwards, an English uh, book il illustrator from the 1820s. So these are, are wood prints and then colorized just for, for your information. Please join me in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we ask that you send your spirit upon us. Open up our hearts, our minds, our very selves, that as we read the scriptures and your word, and as we proclaim your message, that you will speak to our hearts today. We pray this in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From towards the end of the book of Job, Job's restoration, from the 42nd chapter. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will answer you and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but then Job says, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters, all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he named the first Jemima, and the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuch. In all the land... There were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations, and Job died old and full of days. 
And from Mark, the 10th chapter, Jesus on the road to Jericho. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. We thank God for these words of life. A full face helps us to engage the hard things of life. A mature faith that has grown in fullness will lead us out to encounter the hard things that we have to face. When we have a, a full and mature faith, we can face suffering and betrayal, death, poverty, we can face corporate greed and pollution, hunger, isolation, a pandemic, even violence. When we have a, a full and mature faith, we can look straight in and address the hard facts of our lives, the hard parts that hurt inside and out. We can look at them and know that we have hope and even in our faith, when we look at these dark, hard, broken things, and they seem to, to break us, when we know Jesus, we know that then our hope is restored. In our passage today, Jesus meets a blind man going into Jericho. But we recognize from our passage today and in the last few weeks that it was not only Bartimaeus that was blind, but also the disciples were blinding themselves. You see, Three times Jesus had told them that he was to go to Jerusalem, be betrayed, despised by the leaders, crucified or killed, die and live again. He told them once and when Peter rebuked him, he rebuked Peter. He told them again and the disciples were, were worried about the greatest. And then once again he told them, remember last week, that again he would be betrayed and die and rise again. And James and John are more worried about their positions of power. I believe Mark places this story of blind Bartimaeus here to remind us just how blind sometimes we are. You see, the disciples didn't want to see the hard things of Jesus' ministry. They didn't want to see the, the ugly things, the things that make us want to turn our head. Blood and violence, rejection, hatred. They didn't want to hear it, and they certainly didn't appear as if they didn't want to, to see it. They seemed to close their ears and close their eyes. Every time Jesus began to talk about his rejection and his suffering.
Maybe that's part of the power of the book of Job is it does force us to look at our existential condition, if you will, the reality of suffering and particularly the reality of undeserved suffering, innocent suffering. How do we look at those and not want to turn away? How do we look at that kind of suffering and not want to, to blind our eyes? You remember the old Oedipus story. When Oedipus realizes what he has done to kill his father and had children with his mother, he blinds himself so that he cannot see anymore. Sometimes we want to be blinded, don't we, in this suffering that we see in our world and children that suffering in this pandemic isolation and innocent people so senselessly struggling to breathe as they lose their lives. We certainly would like to, to blind ourselves to some of this. We want to find meaning in it. Maybe just like those visitors of Job. You remember the story of Job. Job is a, a test of, of God's faithfulness of hope, if you will. In agreement at the beginning, God and the Satan, the adversary, the accuser, make a deal. Job is faithful and prosperous. And the Satan says, well, it's just because of all he has, all your blessings. That what makes him good. So in the deal, God decides to, to take his blessings away, his protection, his providence. And in that, the Satan attacks Job. First, taking all his property through raiders. Secondly, all his children, all are killed in an earthquake. Everything is robbed and taken from Job. And if that were not enough, God pulls back and then lets the Satan attack Job's personal body and covers it with sores that won't heal, that he takes pot shirts to scrape in order to find some comfort. You may remember his wife tells him to curse God and die rather than face this suffering, rather than see this suffering. And then his three friends come and they wait for a week and then they begin to no negotiate. Why is he suffering? Oh, you must be a sinner. You must have done something wrong. There must be a reason for this suffering, something you did. But all that is just blindness and untruth. Finally, in the midst of a whirlwind, God confronts Job and basically tells him, I'm God and you're not. I set the foundations of the universe and you didn't. I filled it with life and you didn't. How are you going to understand me? You're going to judge me? You're going to see and control me? And to that we see the ending in our passage today, or the beginning. Job realizes who he is, that he is dust and ashes before the Creator. But in his humility, in his faith, God restores hope. Job's faithfulness creates a hope in Job that overcomes all this loss, all his physical hurting. That hope still lives in Job through his faith. Maybe the disciples thought like Job's friend that this sin must be a, a cause. There must be a, a reason for it. But Jesus cleared all that away. He cleared the blindness away from them and hopefully for us. He hears Bartimaeus calling to him and he stops. And then he tells the crowd to, Send him to me. Send him to Jesus. 
And so Bartimaeus gets up so quickly that he leaves all his belongings, his cloak, and rushes to Jesus. And there Jesus asks him, what do you want? It, you might think it's obvious. You know, maybe he wanted food, maybe he wanted a house, maybe he want, but no. He wants his sight restored. And in that moment, in his faith, Jesus restores his hope, restores him to hope, restores him to sight so that he might see again. I chose this picture here of this eye because I don't know if you can see it in the reflection is a, an image of someone's image of Jesus. But it captured my imagination. What is it for the first thing for Bartimaeus to once again see Jesus? Isn't it the hope for all of us in that last moment of our existence as we pass in death that we will see Jesus? What is that restored hope that Bartimaeus must have when he sees again and sees Jesus and his world? So often we want to, to turn away so often we want to keep in our own little silo, keep to our own world, mind our own business. And Jesus may be calling us to take off the blinders, to lift up and to open our eyes and see again. And in a mature faith, we will see struggles, we'll see hurt, we'll see death and we'll see pain, we'll see pandemic and isolation and violence and we'll see suffering. But in that faith, we'll also see more. We'll see a hope and we'll see new possibilities that come in our faith. Just like Job's restoration, it wasn't a return, but it was a restoration of a hope that life could have meaning, that could have fullness, that could have abundance. And so when we take off our blinders, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of the, the personal sufferings that we know and see and experience, we too can have restored hope. Whenever we open our eyes and we see the blessings of Jesus, we see the blessings of resurrection and restored life. Whenever we know the love of Jesus and the forgiveness of Jesus through the cross and resurrection, we once again know restored hope. No matter how dark the times can be, and I've shared with you, during this pandemic, I believe it's the first time in my life that I have touched on depression. Where I have touched in, in places where it does seem to be despair. It does seem to be no answer. It does seem to lead to emptiness. And in those moments of loss and, and spiritual hurt and pain, I've had Jesus renew my hope. In those times when I turn to prayer, when I've opened my Bible and read Jesus' words, I've had a hope restored. I begin to see the light again and know the path that Jesus is leading me. If you've known that darkness too, if you've touched on those feelings as I have, follow that same path, my friends. Talk to our God. Pray to our God. Open your scriptures, read the words of hope. And as your eyes are opened, not from the blindness of light, but from the blindness of our spirit, maybe then, like Bartimaeus, we'll catch a glimpse of Jesus, of Jesus for us, for our lives, for our restored hope. Mature faith can face these struggles. 
It doesn't face him unscarred or uninjured. But a mature can face suffering, betrayal, death, just like Jesus. A mature, mature faith can face the, the struggles that we have of isolation and pandemic and death. My friends, in our full faith, in the faith that Jesus wants to give and walk with each of us, even when we're in the darkness, even when we may seem blinded to where we're going, Jesus is with us, with us in the struggle, with us in our faith, and with us and willing and ready to restore our hope. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, choir. This is a time when we gather to share our joys and our concerns. We have a few uh, written on the, uh, the screen, but uh, I've got a couple of others that I want to, to share with you, and we'll uh, uh, be glad to have you share your joys and concerns with me. One is for the, the, the family of uh, Lou uh, Mahurin. Uh, this is uh, uh, Chris's aunt. Uh, she has uh, she passed away this week, and uh, 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 there's been complications with her passing. Passing in that her son Tim, uh, Chris's cousin, has has some health issues, and uh, they don't quite know what's going on with him. So they're not able to move forward with the the planning for a memorial. And it's a uh, uh, as you you all know, sometimes in the the time of of sorrow and loss, you even have more complications. So we want to, to pray for the Mahurin family, uh, for Lou and, and for uh, all of Chris's family in this time of, of loss. Of course, we want to remember uh, Ellen today and, and her quick healing and, and uh, return to us. We uh, also, I have a, a joy to, to uh, share with you. Uh, later today, I'm going to the temple, uh, the Jewish temple, uh, Sher Emet, for my niece's uh, wedding. Uh, my niece Rachel is marrying uh, Nikhil at 4 o'clock today. And so I'm really excited. It's been a long time coming. I guess. Any other joys or concerns? That's a joy for me. Any joys or concerns? Um, you sure? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Sue. Yes, and that is Jessica and Walter. Yes, thank you, thank you, Sue. Yes, indeed. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns? Let's, uh, let's come together in prayer. Ever-present God, remind us as you reminded Job, that our ways are not your ways, and that your understanding is far beyond ours. And it's in our humbleness, God, that Job described as dust and ashes, that we place ourselves into your hand and into your care. Lord, we ask that you'll help us to, to journey in faith. We pray that you will take away those things that we want to blind us and hide our vision of you and of what we need to do with our faith. Lord, we pray that you will help us to see the way that you are leading us, the way that you lay before us with your word and with your life. Help us to follow that way of faithfulness and love, and especially today, hope. And it's in that hope, Lord, that we pray for the Mahurin family. We pray for the family of, of Lou. We ask that you watch over them, keep them faithful, and help them to turn and trust in you. We especially ask that you watch over Chris's cousin Tom as he faces a number of serious health issues and help them to discern a course for his care and treatment. Lord, in this time of, of death and loss, we pray that you will help them to look to you for hope and for the life to come. Lord, we ask that you watch over Ellen, help her to rest and to heal. We're so thankful for Scott today, and Lord, we ask that you will uh, give pa Ellen patience in this time. Help her to, to follow the course that she needs to go, and we pray, Lord, that she will be well and, and back with us soon. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over Jessica at the celebration of, of Walter coming into the world. Lord, we pray that you will uh, keep them both close in your hand and help Walter to grow healthy and strong each day. 
And soon, Lord, we pray that they will uh, be moving forward in wholeness and, and health. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over Kay and help her to heal from the fall and her nose. Lord, be with, with Tom and Lois. Be with Lynn and Diane. Be with Fern and Doris and Carol. Be with Sarah. Watch over Pamela. Be with Brittany and uh, Mary's brother. Be with Lil and Ruth and, and Jake. Be with Sue and Sean and Lynn and all those that we lift up to you in prayer in our hearts, God. Lord, we pray that you help us to grow in our faith. Help us to have a faith that's not just a fair weather faith or a, a, a rose colored glasses faith, but a faith that is real and strong and lasting in which we can build a life with your help. Lord, help us to, to trust in you today that even in the times of darkness and loss, the light of your hope still shines and your love is waiting to claim us. Lord, today, help us to go out into our world that has so many dark spots with a, a light of hope. Lord, we pray for these missionaries that have been kidnapped and ransomed. We pray for all those around the globe that are serving you at their, the risk of their life. And we pray for all those that are caught in horrible struggles of war and strife, all those who struggle for clean water and food each day. Lord, don't blind us to their suffering, but let us see and then let us respond with help. Lord, help us to be people that don't turn away, but step up to serve, step up to care, come out with love. It's in this love that we ask that you guide us today and tomorrow and always. Especially, Lord, may this love guide us as we pray, especially the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a number of uh, uh, announcements uh, and things coming up in the life of our church. First, next Sunday will be uh, our trunk or treat uh, Halloween event in our parking lot for our preschool and our, our community children. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out front. We hope that you will uh, uh, sign up and participate. We all already have a number of cars. I think it's going to be a great event. Uh, uh, costume is, is optional. And... Uh, we hope that you'll you'll share in this uh, time. Are there any other announcements? Anything else to, to share with that? Okay. And uh, uh, the trivia night the trivia night is uh, coming on the sixth, uh, I believe. And are you, is, are you going to speak on the trivia night? Thank you, Stephanie. I just want an excuse to use the microphone again. Yeah. <laughs> Trivia night. It's on the 6th of November. It's going to be lots of fun. I know this because I'm making up all the questions. And I need a table to make sure that they beat Pamela. We cannot let her table win again. <laughs> I've got some hard questions for you, honey. <laughs> So we've got the trivia night. Um, I can't read that backwards. It's from 7 till whenever we're done, and the doors open at 6. It'll be lots and lots of fun. You'll get to hear me talk, and you'll get to see me organize my M&Ms because that's like the best part of trivia, watching Stephanie organize her OCD at M&Ms. Um, and then we also have raffle baskets. So thank you so much for everybody who's contributed. Uh, if you have something, if you don't want to contribute something, we will accept um, a donation and then we can get the rest of the baskets get together we will have the baskets ready for next Sunday so anybody who isn't going to be able to make it to trivia can 
still um, participate with the basket raffle and we'll have little boxes and you can order to order buy tickets and put the little tickets in the next to the basket you guys want to to bid on that's the word bid um, I think that's about it did I cover it all I'm looking at Carol yeah. Woohoo! thank you Stephanie oh there you go It's lots of fun. And so, yeah, so Carol has created these wonderful, nice sign-up sheets out there. So if you can contribute either your time to uh, doing some work in the kitchen or setting up, that would be great, too. And, of course, sign up for a table or just for you or somebody else. But please, please invite people. It's lots and lots of fun. I promise. Girl Scout, promise. Oh, my. All righty, I'm done. Yes, thank you. No, uh, yes, I hope that you'll join. It'll be a, a great time. Uh, there's still envelopes for the peace offering. If you want to turn that into the office, we'll be glad to include you in our, our national uh, offering for our uh, local and world peace ministries. Also, we do have a stack and go uh, a meal this Thursday, and please come out and help. Last time, Carol and Sue Kohler were heroic in putting on this meal. Uh, there were three of us, and uh, we... we, we we got her done, didn't we, Carol? But we sure would love to uh, have you share in the joy of, uh, of uh, handing out these meals. Uh, we have some regular customers that, uh, customers, maybe not the right word, regular people that come by that it makes a difference in their families. They tell us this. They, they, they get families and they take to their elderly neighbors and their friends. And uh, I, hope that, I, I hope that you can share in it and know this same joy that we do. Yes, Carol. And, and also not just for the community, for everyone here as well. Please yes. Come, if you want to just come through and buy a particular dinner, please do so. Um, for everybody in the congregation, help more mm -hmm. people to eat whatever you want. You can come to that as well. Yes. Oh, yes, I always get my hot dog. I was <laughs> <laughs> uh, hot off the grill. Uh, uh, but yes, please come. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, and uh, thank you all uh, for your support, continued support, particularly during this uh, pandemic. It's been incredible. Those who've supported online and here with our plate and, and mailing in and with our PayPal, we're so thankful for your continued faithfulness. And I'm going to invite you to stand and we'll sing the doxology and then our final hymn this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please remain standing and we'll sing our final hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Sound. <laughs> 